Welcome to this old relic where we're going to work on the fun, exciting, and thrilling adventures of the Lawn Air 28 today over here from the This Old Relic shop. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to put on some new tires. There's a bracket that needs to be replaced and uh, we're going to put some lipstick on this pig. Um, we're going to probably paint some of this stuff up just so it doesn't continue to rust. And then um, hopefully we can just put it away for the winter if we don't, if the snow doesn't get too deep before we get done. So, with that due, let's get started. What I'm going to do is actually start with the front wheel, and I'm just going to slip this whole thing off. I think it's just these two bolts that hold it on.
Okay, so this is what's uh, suspect now. I gotta have to lower the jack. But <clears throat> this has four bolts that hold the wheel together. And then there's other bolts in here that actually go to a plate in the back. So it's not just this one that holds that wheel on and keeps it spinning. So I know this is one of them. It holds that plate on. So we'll take that one off. I'm going to take a wild guess. Actually, I, I think I figured it out because it used different bolts on them. This side loosened up. I'm going to go loosen up the other side. Now it's this bracket here too. I got a, I have a replacement for this. This has been giving me problems. I lost the woodruff key in it. See, it's been welded back together, and I'm thinking that's part of the problem. So we're gonna pull that out. And uh, but before I do that, I want to get these wheels set up, ready, and prepped for paint. Now if you look at this, there's actually still bolts left Oops. in the wheels. These hold the wheels together. There's a gap in them. These two wheels come apart in two pieces. So that should help me uh, get this thing apart that much easier. Probably help with the painting too. They put in some kind of filler. So that these uh, don't go flat. Now, in a perfect world, these two should just spread apart. But, have you ever known anything to be perfect in this old relic? Alright, we're going to have to figure something else out. Welcome to something else. I'm going to go through with you exactly what's going on with these. So, like I said, the wheels come apart in two pieces. I got this one apart. I'm going to show you how I did that with the other one. I used the special Lawn Air tire press on that. And, uh, there's that. Uh, so they're now part in two pieces. But what they did is they used some kind of fill or something. Looks like this one they filled an inner tube um, to make them solid tires, which is great. You don't have to worry about a flat. Probably the reason why they did that was because these tires were so worn out and they didn't want to replace them. So they just decided to fill the inside of the tires just to uh, prevent any flats and they won't, wouldn't have to bother with it. Now it's creating a world of hurt for me. Um, that one I couldn't get out of the tire. I think you saw the fur on the first one with me prying it out. I, th I thought I brought it over here, but apparently I didn't. But that's what it is. They use some kind of fill. It was nice as that one. That one didn't have it in a tube. This one had it in a tube, so at least the wheel's nice and clean. I don't have to clean all that gunk off the wheels before painting. I just got to prep those things. And then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you what I did with that one, with this one, with the special Lawn Air Tire Press. Alright, my special Lawn Air Tire Press right here, uh, aka my bench vise. What I'm going to do is just take it so that the vise 
is just below the rim. I don't want to actually compress the rim. But what we're going to do is compress the tire. See, it already wants to pop on out of there. I'm just going to keep compressing it until we can actually get something in there to pry it out. Now typically to get these off you wouldn't necessarily have to do that, although the bench vise is good if you don't plan to keep the tires. They do help uh, break those beads pretty easily. So this one too had an inner tube in it. This one looked like it kind of exploded or something. That's probably when they filled it. But uh, these came out relatively clean as well. So we just have that front wheel to really clean up. And then these are going to get cleaned up for paint. but. Other than that, I will save you the, uh, the sanding. It's not the most exciting thing in the world, I know. We're interrupting this program to give you this special news bulletin. If you like this content, I'm asking that you please like and subscribe to the channel. And maybe leave some nice words of encouragement in the comment section. Thank you. We now return back to our regularly scheduled programming. So a lot of people always wonder about the question about the uh, process that I use for painting. Well, um, this particular job. So I started with 100 grit sandpaper. And then I went to 100 grit sandpaper. Then I finished up with 100 grit sandpaper. So if it looks like I sanded it with 100 grit sandpaper, it's because I did. Why did I use 100 grit sandpaper? Why not 60? Why not 120? Why not 30? Whatever. Uh, I was able to find the 100 grit sandpaper in the shop. That was the only sandpaper I was able to find. So that's what I used. Some of you might sit there and say, Mike, that's just lazy. And what I have to say about that is, yep, yep, it's lazy. And uh, frankly, I really don't care. This is not going to win me any trophies at the show. It's basically to try to ease it along for a 35-year-old machine just a little bit longer and uh, hopefully not have some serious rust issues in the near future. At least not any more serious than what I already dealt with. So, then what's the next process? So the next process is I put on some of this stuff and this is actually where it is, uh, what it's doing right now is neutralizes rust and it turns everything black as it dries. Um, it's in the process now with this. I'm trying to, to tape in between the heater going off. So that's why I'm doing that now. The other, the next step after that, we use the self-fetching primer. There is a lot of bare metal on this. There's a lot of regular paint, but there's a lot of bare metal. This is, stuff is just sticks. I might not be using this completely because I'm almost out, but we'll finish that off at least. And then we'll go to the filler primer. This can's pretty low too, but I have a whole other can of this stuff, so I'm not too worried about that. So we'll go into the filler primer, and with that 100 grit sandpaper, we're going to have a lot to fill. And then finally, after the filler primer, comes the Dark Hunter Green, the same stuff we used when we did the engine, the painting for the engine. Uh, that's what I'm going to use on the wheels. So that's the logistics of the painting. Um, as far as painting, well, 
I'll take you over to the paint booth and uh, you can see what I'm using. Okay, here's the paint booth. Uh, you can see all the parts there. We have a Tuscany paint booth. This came from Menards. Um, this was a lot less expensive, actually, than my last paint booth, which uh, came... I got that online. Um, that was a mattress paint booth. But uh, this one was a lot less expensive, around $80 or so. And so, yeah, it's, it's just dysfunctional. But, uh, yeah, that's the paint booth. Here's the parts. You can start seeing all the rust and stuff on them turning black. Yeah, I didn't do that great of a job with the rust. I just was trying to kind of smooth it out because it was bad. This is the part I have actually been really waiting for. Um, there's been a broken part on here. I ordered this a while ago. Um, I went through the entire season with this broken part. And just trying to uh, get it to maneuver and things like that. I'm missing other things on top of that. But I got the part in. Um, I was waiting to do the wheels and tires and everything to put this part on. But, well, I'll show it to you. This part right here, we got a nice new shiny one. Pretty green. We're going to put the pretty green one on. That's going to look pretty. But, if you look closely, right up here, it's actually um, been welded. Yeah, I'll show you. Now, I don't know exactly why that was welded. Um, I got the machine like that, but it, the, I, I've replaced the key several times and it keep, would keep falling out. So I'm guessing it, it's, it was welded so it's a little larger than it was in the past. And it just kept giving problem, or making problems. So. Might have to take a little more off than just this. We'll see.
I'm just sitting here waiting for paint to dry. Quite literally, I've been painting all day, uh, except for a trip out to the hardware store to pick up some parts. Well, I'll show you what I'm what I've been working on. So you got those all painted pretty. You might notice that 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 side. I don't know what the name of it is, but that side marker is there. That's the old one uh, from the opposite side. So when I uh, put the new one on, I didn't have the right size woodruff key. Um, there wasn't a large enough one in my kit. So to make sure I got the right side, I took the other one off to pull the woodruff key out to take to the hardware store. I actually ended up buying two new woodruff keys, um, that same size. And I also got new set screws for both sides. I figured why have it off? I might as well just go ahead and paint it as long as I'm painting everything else. And uh, that'll be that. So all of the, the new, we'll have all new hardware and then everything will be painted pretty. I do plan to replace that other one eventually, uh, just not high on the priority list at the moment. Um, so I did get some more painting done on the actual physical machine frame, uh, but you'll see that when we put things back together. So this is where we're at. We're waiting for paint to dry so that we can put everything back together. Okay, so we finished up all the painting. I actually started got, getting some work. I got the front tire on. I actually wanted to show you, though, how to put these tires on. This is kind of neat. Um, technically, on these wheels, I could put solid tires on them. But I'm going to show you how these wheels and these tires go on. We have these two pieces that we pulled apart. And if you notice, there's a notch in there, right in there. That is for the tire stem in the inner tube. What we're going to do is, it shouldn't really matter which side, because it's on both, of, both sides of them. It's really easy. We're just going to put this in like that. Make sure it gets around the wheel. Make sure your stem lines up properly so you're able to get the 90 degree angle. Push the other side into Line it up, and then we're just going to bolt it back together. Except the inner tube's not in the proper spot. Alright, and we'll tighten that all down again when we get it down on the ground, but we got to get the other side on first. We are currently working on getting into final operations here. It's the last thing we got to do to get this thing on the ground, basically get rolling. Um, I started putting together the front wheel already. We're just going to take a little grease, grease up the shaft. I'm not going to go crazy because this one has a grease cert going to it. So I do want to get something in there, make sure has a good initial contact and then we're just going to load it up with grease to the zerk, spin it around a few times and uh, yeah that's pretty much it.
Okay, so I guess all that's left now is get it ready for winter. to go ahead and put this thing away for the winter in the middle of January. We've had a little bit of a thaw out, which is going to help a little bit with the snow. I'm hoping the new tires grip well in the snow. I have a little precarious of a situation and where I'm storing this thing for the winter. So it's well going to be interesting. Welcome to my winter storage. So I have this gazebo in my backyard and um, in the summer we use it. We have a nice little table which is actually over here in the corner that we sit around. We got chairs out here too that are being stored in here. But in the winter I do a little something different with it. So there's my zero turn underneath the cover. We got the core aerator up here. I put these tarps up here it kind of helped keep the snow out of it because it has a nice roof on it. Last year I just put the zero turn with the cover. It seemed to work pretty good. Um, however, the tarps don't seem to have worked good because we've had quite a bit of wind this year. So they've just kind of gotten ripped to shreds and stuff like that. However, it seems to have held the snow out of here, which is good. So I'm going to go ahead and winterize the core aerator. Typically what I'll do is... Um, I'll try to drain as much gas as I can, let it run until it dies. I tried that and I checked the gas tank. There's way too much gas in there. So I'm just going to throw some heat in there. And uh, this stuff has a stay bill in it as well. And uh, let it just sit, sit in there until spring when we need to pull it out again, which will be in a few weeks, actually. And it shouldn't be too long, uh, maybe a month and a half, maybe two months max pull out around March so until then well but it's put away for the winter and uh, that pretty much does it for this episode I'll see you next time